are such an asshole. All right, we got a, a good question, but one that is, uh, I was going to close the minimalism course, but now that this guy's talking about minimalism, obviously I'll keep it open for a little bit longer. Uh, so the link to my course, Achieving Minimalism, is linked down, down below through Teachable. Why is it $450? It's not $450. It's more like $500 when you add sales tax. The reason it's $500 is because I'm sick and tired of giving out advice and no one follows it because they don't have any skin in the game. That's why you need to invest a kidney. <clears throat> and trust you me, if you become a, a minimalist, your finance, you will you will more than earn back the $500 because, you know, you needed that $700 a month car payment, right? You needed that brand new car, right? You couldn't afford it. That's why you went to the bank, right? Because the used car was just too good or not, not good enough. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Uh, anonymous rights. I practice an extreme form of minimalism where I'm very, where I live on very little similar to early retirement extremes. Jacob Fisk, Lund, not kind Lund Fisker, uh, which I recommend his book. When others ask me about what, m about when others ask me about my, what <clears throat> my, what I'm, I'm reading how you guys write it. When others ask me about my what I've been doing with my life, I typically talk about my passion, minimalism, and its related activities, throwing away possessions, living without a car, living off grid, pragmatic veganism, scavenging early retirement, low cost of living countries, uh, future plans and lower expenses as much as possible, and personal finance in general. I don't talk about these things to brag, although I'm proud of myself, but that is genuinely what I've been focusing on in my life. <clears throat> if you can imagine someone excitedly talking about their successful small business and everything related to it, that I would be that would be how I talk about minimalism. What has been surprising to me is the amount of hostility I've encountered both in person and online. In person, extended family member now acts mildly insecure and defensive around me. A close family member is passive aggressive, condescending, and almost self-righteously argumentative. As if we're having a male dominance contest, this has gotten so bad that I've had to at first politely, then aggressively confront him, even to the point of offering to fight in order to get him to stop bullying me. <clears throat> a friend that's concerned that I'm giving up on life, but still tries to be respectful nonetheless. This friend's parents are rich doctors and react to my lifestyle with mild disgust when he tells them about it. Well, at least as long as you're not becoming Diogenes where you're naked and living in a in a barrel. That's a that's that's just stupid. He was a great Greek philosopher. No, no, he wasn't. He really wasn't. Uh, in person, I can only imagine what other people are often thinking in their head, but aren't forward enough to say. The main commonality I see in all of the above people is that they're trad cons. Oh, interesting. The main commonality I see in people who are respectful, intrigued, and supportive is highly logical personality type. Okay. Um, on Reddit, I've been posting questions of various low cost of living sub subreddits. Ask if it's possible for me to live on 100 a month, non including insurance visas. And I would estimate that 90% of the prize are disbelief, arguing, ridicule, passive. Well, you're on Reddit. I mean, well, yeah. that You could you could write about how ice cream tastes good and people will still argue with you. Uh, hostility attacks on my character. Yeah, it's just Reddit. As if I were a visible leper walking in a healthy crowd. 5% logical, respectful answer is in the negative. The last 5% is one or two people telling me that's possible and common for the poor natives and what I should do to implement such a plan. Uh, I don't get why my lifestyle bothers so, people so much. I could easily conclude that they're jealous of my ability to retire early and write them off. But it seems that sometimes the reactions I get go far beyond that. <clears throat> I often feel outright condemned as if to them on a emotional level i'm doing something shamefully repulsive and antisocial but without any logical reason to explain why it is those things i wouldn't have this complaint if non-said supporters stuck purely to purely pragmatic arguments about the lifestyle is it viable or preferable but i almost never get that in person and only only seem to get it a paltry five percent of the time have you experienced this way why, why do you think this happened um i actually haven't uh Thankfully, I guess no one's really I've gotten guff like my stepdad one time says you'd live in a van if you could. And now look at this van life, huh? Say, like, well, you, what's up? Where, why was the money somewhere? Was I going to get the monies? Was the money somewhere? Where's the money hiding? 
Got my money hiding somewhere? I'm going to find out where it is. And uh, there was no money hiding anywhere. And so, yeah, I, I, and van life is now becoming a very viable option. <clears throat> but what what it is, is is likely several things or a combination thereof. Uh, first, yeah, it's jealousy. Uh, I, some of it, I'd imagine, is. Because uh, the main reason you pursue minimalism is for freedom. And it's kind of maybe more a jealousy of opportunity costs. Like they have more stuff. And it would logically be, though you wouldn't because minimalism would be the antithesis of this. <clears throat> you would logically be envious. Oh, it must be nice to have a television. It must be nice to have a house. It must be nice to have a nice car. Um because that's the opportunity cost. But you like, well, those things might be nice, but I don't need them. I prefer, I value more my freedom and lack of worry about where the money is coming from. They have the opposite. Um, <clears throat> they obviously chose, not necessarily a life of full-blown materialism, but the standard life, which is pre-programmed to be materialism. I mean, you're nobody until somebody gets you a Louis Vuitton handbag. You're nobody unless somebody sees you with a pair of Nike sneakers. Uh, but uh, their opportunity cost is freedom. And I that's one, it's not that anyone gave me guff, but it's the stupidity. Some people would say, loosen up the strings, Clary. Quit being so cheap. But, and, and I, you know what? It hasn't happened in a while. And I think because they finally saw the, the, the results, the product. Uh, but not too long ago, you know, give it up, loosen up, have some fun, live a little. And but at the same time, gee, we can't all be like you. You know, I'm posting pictures of whatever me riding motorcycles to the Canadian Rockies, uh, hiking, doing whatever. And um, I, I was all, my my friends, I presume, are smart. I thought they were smart. I thought they put one and one together. Well, they finally have. And now they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. You are free. Oh, that's right. You have a very little mortgage. Oh, that's right. You you paid cash for cars. Oh, that's right. You probably could retire at 50. Um, I don't know if they need to get kids or they need to get it out of their system and realize having the fancy truck wasn't everything it was meant to be. I don't know what it was. Uh, but I don't know if it was envy, or maybe a little bit of healthy envy, but it was opportunity cost. You always envy the opportunity cost because that was your next best cost. That is your single biggest cost because you chose what was the best alternative. So, oh, I wanted to go out. I got a blonde and a brunette. All right. I choose the brunette. Dang, I wonder what it's like going out with that blonde. Well, that's the, the highest cost. Oh, I wonder what that's like. So <clears throat> I don't know if it's, it could be just natural, healthy envy. Like, oh man, I wish I could do that. But you know, I still things considered. I'd like to. I enjoy my car. I enjoy my boat. I enjoy my house. And I enjoy my things. Or actual unhealth, unhealthy. How dare he? Where where the hatred and the vitriol and the irrationality, the irrational criticism and the condemnation comes from. Um, and, and I've never had that. People are always like. They were trying to do it for my best interest. Have a little fun, live a little. I'm like, you got to find out about 15 years who's living the most. But where it seems like in your case, they're bad, jealous, bad, envious. Um, <clears throat> where they probably regret their decision. And that's the, usually they're not angry at you. They're angry at themselves that they chose poorly. And now they have, I don't know, fat spouse, bunch of debt. What was it? Like a third of people make over a quarter million live paycheck to paycheck. I saw it, man. I saw it. And that, and <clears throat> that, that's real. Like they're, they're pissed off. They're a slave. They are. Cause why are they going to debt? The other reason <clears throat> of several, um, is that you're, you're introducing or not introducing, but, uh, showing them undeniably that there was an alternative path that they could have taken aside from the materialistic, you go girl, everyone get an MBA, do bro, corporate executive, uh, girl boss, sports management, dude, bra, flipping houses, bro, workaholic, look at all my bling. 
lifestyle. Um, <clears throat> and, and what, you didn't have to go to college. That's a huge burden right there. Uh, you don't have a mortgage. And you're showing, hey, I can do it. I can live it. And I think that they're maybe not mad at you necessarily, but they take their frustrations out on you that they were essentially lied to. Or no one told them that, hey, you can enjoy life and be a good quality person or maybe just a, a neutral person. But there's a life where you don't have to work 60 hours a week with commute included. That your value could be one of intellectual endeavors or adventure or relaxing or just, you know, I'm not a big meditation guy, but I'm starting to see the value in it once you get to a certain point, once you get high enough Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, you know, I, I really just enjoy tuning in to some astrophysics podcasts. I, I really enjoy philosophy podcasts. I went for a ride today. Just uh, I lost a poker pretty early. I'm like, oh, four rides. Nice day. And I just had a cigar. I listened to the Turd Flinging Monkey Show. It was very relaxing, very nice. <clears throat> and I turn it off sometimes, let my mind wander. Uh, that you're allowed to have that's that's a it's a wonderful, relaxing, enjoyable life. And I think it's not only that they weren't told that there was this alternative life, and now you're forcing them to realize it's true and they they could still attain that path, but they wasted their life debatably, possibly in the past. Um, oh, God, what was it? Not only did you show it was an, an alternative, but it also is a better alternative. <clears throat> that and not only is it better, but also the, the life expectancy, the value, the, the shine is gone now or, uh, after the materialistic life. So all these people who, you know, they, they got the car, they got the motorcycle, they got the McMansion in the suburb, like the doctors, like they got to be sick of their wealth. I'm not advocating communism that we take it. I'm just saying, you know, I've, I've had nice things, you know, <clears throat> I still have nice things. Uh, but inevitably everything has a, has a, uh, a, uh, what's it called? Uh, a life, uh, a shelf life, a novelty, a, a limit of novelty. And okay, you got a Corvette, and then you got the next year's Corvette. <clears throat> you got, you know, I got a, gosh, I think all my motorcycles are at least 13 years old. And you got the brand new Harley Small Dick Roadster. I mean, um, fancy Roadster. You got the new Harley Paraglide, Power Glide, Seltzer Glide, something Glide. Whatever all you debt laden boomers buy to you know do your your uh, bucket list, um, it, it doesn't the the best the best time you're going to remember riding is probably your first time. It'll be the most exhilarating because of the risk involved. <clears throat> uh, but okay, you've bought seven new Harleys in your life. Is an eighth one going to be any different? No. This is why they get excited about amenities. Oh, it's got. Does it have this amenity thing? No, it oh it does. Oh, it's like that doesn't really increase your riding experience. It's okay, you got a coffee holder this time. All right, good for you. Uh I think that the especially if you're in the 30s, that dude bro party lifestyle, gonna get stuff, gonna get a sweet pad. And girls are gonna get uh, I guess I guess women never get tired of clothes and handbags, right, ladies? I mean, there's I mean. I mean, it's it's the meaning of life, right? You need you need a Jimmy Choo shoe and you need a Chanel handbag, right? Because what else is there to live for, right? So I don't. I really wonder if women get tired of it. Uh, but I think most people, somewhere in the back of the mind, like, okay, I've done it. I've had the house in the mixed suburbs. I've had the Range Rover. And the only thing to do is get the newest model. Yes, I have a bachelor's degree. Now I need a master's. Now I need a doctorate. Okay, have fun. You're you're you spent a lot of time and a lot of money in school. Good for you. I I hiked a mountain. <laughs> I I uh <clears throat> I fixed my motorcycle. I put in a retaining wall, and it was much more enjoyable than going to school for whatever jokes the degree all people go for advanced degrees. So I think they, the buyer's remorse, 
And instead of a healthy reaction, once again, saying, well, how do I do that? Maybe I ought to implement, maybe there, because it doesn't sound these people are, are 40 or older, I'm guessing. Some of them are. Uh, instead, they, they want to double down. No, they've had this life philosophy. They've had this value system their entire time. Uh, they worked long and hard to borrow money from the bank. So the bank would lend them money so that they could rent. <laughs> I don't know, really fancy house, really fancy car. Uh, that That's how, and, and let's also talk about this. Not to kiss minimalists ass, but usually more of a deep philosophical type. You really probably want to make your life count. These people are not, the average rank and file, especially Americans, are not deep or philosophical. They're robots, they're NPCs. They, they are programmed to derive value. Their value system is one of materialism usually, or status or prestige which I would consider materialism anyway, because it's, it has no value. Ooh, master's degree. Like those aren't being issued like machine gun bullets in world war two. Ooh, you got assistant director title position. Have fun commuting. Ooh, <clears throat> you got a corner office again, have fun commuting and paying taxes. And sitting in meetings. And uh, I, I, uh, I, I think once they're vested in that life philosophy, you showing that you're, you're, you got a different life philosophy and that yours might be better, they might get pissed. They might. Um, so there's that. And, and then I guess another thing, and here's where you got to be careful. Um, it, you may be coming off as like bragging or proselytizing. <clears throat> and you have to be really careful because what you're running the risk of, it sounded like you're becoming a little bit libertarian, -y. new newborn libertarian uh, or born again libertarian where, okay, it's very exciting to you, um, but not to everyone else. And I'm not saying don't talk about it. Like, oh, what's up with you? She's been... <laughs> This will send everyone running and screaming because all the other libertarians before us have ruined our reputation. But let's say we didn't have the past 50 years of libertarian ruining libertarians' reputations. Say it's 1950. Oh, well, what you been up to, Clary? Ah, I've been studying this thing called libertarianism. Yeah, what is that? What is that about? Is it about liberty? Yeah, pr pretty much. It's kind of what the founding fathers based it on. And here's a little simple diagram. And, <clears throat> you know, we're over here in this quadrant. And, just seemingly, I, I I was pretty conservative and traditional religious, and but and I was against uh, I don't know drugs or um, women's right to choose. But now thinking about it, and especially the individual aspect of it, I'm I'm realizing that not everything is my responsibility, nor is it my authority, and, and maybe individuals should be allowed to do even things that we disagree with. <clears throat> and they'd say like marrying black people. I'm like, Whoa, I didn't say that. Hold on, it's still the 1950s here. Hang on. But, and they'd be like, that's very, that sounds interesting. What it sounds like you're doing, like, hey, what are you up to? Oh, have you found Jesus? I mean, minimalism? Let me tell you about minimalism. Minimalism, minimalism, minimalism. And this and that and all you suckers that are slaves. And da, da, da. <clears throat> it's kind of like, uh, it'd be very similar. Um, mine is telling people about the central bank, uh, the evils of. It'd be very similar to like you decide to lose a lot of weight and get really healthy and everybody else say, hey, what's up? I'm like, yeah, man, I started working out. I've been getting in shape. And yes, I understand you're very excited about it, losing the weight. And minimalism is a, is prob probably one of, the, if not the most uh, <clears throat> valuable secular, secular philosophy, secular religion to subscribe to because it focuses on, on life, value, freedom, the individual, making your life count, being unique, not for uniqueness sakes, but so you can enjoy it. Um, but, uh, so I can, I can appreciate your excitement about it, but when it comes, you have to understand it's this, just like fat people don't like being reminded that they're fat and out of shape and no one wants to have sex with them and they're ugly. 
uh, people don't want to be reminded that they're essentially debt slaves. Isn't that what that's what most Americans are? And so just as if you were to get like really good in shape and like, hey, you know, and I even made this mistake because I was like, oh, yeah, and I'm like, well, do you guys want to go for a hike? And no, like it was just crickets chirping. I'm like, OK, never mind. Um, People are going to hate the guy who's like, what are you up to? Ha, hit the gym. I lost 60 pounds. My body fat is down here. I'm getting laid all the time. Um, Bobbity, 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 boo. I mean, you see what happens when a when a girl loses weight. What are the uh, what do her friends do? You need to eat a sandwich. Oh, you don't need to cut your hair. Oh, you were beautiful the way you are, <laughs> or you were. <laughs> and every guy's like, "No, she wasn't. Definitely not. No, she's definitely markedly improved. Yes, <clears throat> yes. And I will demonstrate by asking her out and not you." Ari. Uh, so what I would do is just tone it down because I don't know how you had to get into like a, like threaten a guy with physical violence to defend your position. And so what I would do is, is for your own sake and just, you know, so you get along with other people, you know, kind of, kind of do the, the Jew marketing. Okay. Jews don't proselytize. Jews don't say, Hey, have we told you about not Jesus? Matter of fact, we murdered the guy. Let us tell you about not Jesus. Oh, tell me more. Well, there's these Egyptians and the thing, the flood, and then, and, then, uh, and then the Romans, and then uh, this crazy guy with long hair. We killed him. We did away with But then we're very sorry about it later. They don't do that. Jews are like, yeah, we're Jewish. And then they go about, you're like, well, what's that like? You You'd be bored with it. You wouldn't like it very much. No, no, really. What, 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 why would I be bored? No, it's just, it's not your thing. It's just not, you're not really cut out for it. Okay. So I didn't, I didn't want to say anything. It's just, uh, you, you know, just, uh, let's, let's just have our sandwich. Let's, let's relax. No, wait, why, 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 you gotta, you gotta apply. Okay. And you gotta, but like, you know what, you uh, tr trust me, man, it's, it's not that great of a club. It's, we just get really good food. Except for matzo ball soup, and we have festivals, and and we got nine days of Christmas, even though we murdered the guy. Um, <clears throat> you don't want to have it, and then and then like in other words, they're not proselytizing, and I think that would be a much better way to interact with anybody. You know, if someone asks, you know, like, oh, what are you all about? You say, well, I went to school, da, 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 but I'm actually kind of a pretty hardcore minimalist. Oh, really? What does that entail? Now that's not a green light. To brag, okay? But you say, well, I worked. Tell them a story. I worked. People are dicks. I don't like dealing with people. I don't like being a slave. Probably more diplomatic than that. But and then I just want to like, well, I'm going to die soon. And um, I just didn't want to work that much. You know, I, I'm not against work, but I'd rather go and explore things. And so I, I kind of looked at the personal budget. I read this book called Early Retirement Extreme by Jacob Lund Fisker, or do I not have it? Where's Poor Richard's Retirement? What happened to it? Or Poor Richard's Retirement, which is my book. You could also read. And I looked at the budget and I realized that uh, if you didn't have a house, you didn't have a car, <clears throat> and you didn't go to school, especially for a stupid thing, uh, you can get by on very little and there's a bunch of other places to live. And so I have, I, I do work a job or van life or all the other variant uh, subcategories within minimalism. And I, I traveled the nation and I read another book about minimalism called Reconnaissance Man. It was written by Aaron Clary. <clears throat> and I, I just settled, I decided I learned how to do some programming. And so I uh, got a wireless thing through my T-Mobile account or whatever. And I, I, do some programming and I make some money from my van or I work at a coffee shop. And then I go hike all the wonderful parks in Moab. And, and if it gets a little cold, then I go down to Vegas or Phoenix. And they're like, wow. And then you're like, you don't say, 
Yeah, and all you suckers who are wage slaves and debt slaves for your MBA degree and having kids you can't afford for a house with a fat wife. Ha ha ha, sucker. You see, it's not for everyone. See, see if a little more polished, a little more diplomatic, a little more adroit. It's not for everyone. You know, yeah, I kind of suck sleeping in a van. And uh, but you know it's it's a, I've seen some great things. I really enjoy. It. I get to read. I get to sit and watch sunsets. It's really nice. And then you say, "What do you do?" And that's it. You don't. So don't make a con. I know con. I I enjoy a good debate or a discussion where people uh, politely disagree. Um, but that kind of debate where you're gonna have to you're gonna have to question what has been the religion of America debt and materialism, which is going to uh, accuse 90%, literally 9 out of 10 Americans of wasting their lives, that is not going to sell. That is not going to sell. And so, you know, kind of know your audience, the majority of the people you're hanging out with, friends are not just people you're going to run through. They're debt. They're debt slaves. They're in debt. They don't have enough money saved for retirement. They never will, but they have some really nice things. And uh, they're on the ropes and all they can deal is with what's in front of them. And that's making ends meet every month. <clears throat> you merely introduce the idea and then, and then you move on. But um, since your passion by necessity contradicts the point, purpose, value, and reason in living other people, therefore, you basically, you know, you've contradicted their entire existence. It's not going to sell well. So you say a little bit and then you move on. Like if you're talking about what are you really passionate about? Fossils. All right. I could probably talk all day about fossils and not insult anyone. I might bore some people. And they're gonna and they'll walk away and say, Man, that guy really likes fossils. I never learned so much and I didn't want to learn that much, but they won't hate me in the end. If I'm <clears throat> oh, here's it's you know what it's almost identical to? It's like atheists. There's the atheist, like, yeah, I'm secular. I don't I don't really believe in the afterlife. And you know, I kind of hope there was one, and, and maybe I'll find out. I try to do the best I can, but I just don't see any conclusive proof that, that there's a there's an afterlife or a God. Then you got the atheists, and I think this is where you're running into problem. Have you heard about, I'm an atheist. I, oh, look at you, you stupid sucker of a Christian. You believe in the guy in the clouds. Why don't you say the same things about Muslim? Oh, uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, no, no. Talk talk about all of that way. Let's see what happens to there. Well, uh, hmm, ha. It's like, oh, who's got the false god now? All right. So um, because atheism contradicts, their entire existential life philosophy, you're going to ruffle some feathers. So just talk about it a little bit. Don't brag about it. Don't don't lecture. Don't sermon. Even if you're excited about it and you think you're helping them, you, you're, you're not. Because let's, here's the truth. Most people are just too damn lazy to give up the stuff. They want to borrow money to afford things they can't afford so they can feel good about themselves based on the false value system we have here, in, in the at least in the United States. Where it's he who has the most toys wins. And you're just sitting there like, nah, I don't need my toys. I just need a good hike, a good pair of hiking shoes. Oh, it was beautiful hiking yesterday. It was wonderful. <clears throat> Me and the great one charged up that hill. You got some compliment. And that compliment, like, man, you guys are flying up the hill. You're like, yes, I am. Yes, I am. I should probably tell you the story. They had a rescue. Uh, someone got injured or sick on the hill. And so the rescue people were going up and they had our uh, four wheelers. They're like, oh, they get out of the way. And I guess the four wheelers couldn't go further. We passed them while they were hiking. We So they had four. I don't know where they stopped, but they rode at least halfway up. We still passed them. <laughs> You're supposed to be in better shape than this. <clears throat> All right, let's go to the suit. Oh, so the link to my minimalism course is down below. Uh, I'm going to give it another 48 hours. I was going to close it today. I just got sidetracked with a bunch of other stuff. Um, so sign up now and I'm taking it down and I do not know when <clears throat> I open it up later. Uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. 
Johnny Vegas, 10 generous dollars. Random question. Got a neighbor's kid getting too comfortable going on my property when I'm not home. Cameras. If I talk with parents, doesn't work. <clears throat> Should I fight the father? Laughing out loud. Uh, yeah, you got to fight him somehow. Not physically because that lands you in jail. Um, How are their finances? Are they like a transitory family? Have they been there a long time? <clears throat> Kid near gonna um you gotta you gotta I know you gotta make it costly to the father. I don't know. Um it it also depends on local ordinance and law. I guess you could put up no trespassing sign. Like if you can go after someone for trespassing. <clears throat> put up a little no trespassing sign and then put the cameras on. Yeah, but first, talk to a lawyer. Say, okay, find out if you can get this kid for trespassing or the family. Um, if they do, then you're like, okay, now we're going to court. You know, do it legally. I The, the quick solution is, yeah, just go over there and beat the crap out of the guy. But they're going to get lawyers too. Um. And if and you you don't necessarily want to go to a war like a neighborhood war, but with earplugs and sleeping pills, um, and noise sleeping machines, they make calming noises. You won't really hear if they like play their music really loud. And, and the reason I ask about their financial stability or their transitory nature is like if they're just renting the house. Um, you know what might be good. Take Terrence Pop's administrative violence. That would be a perfect, that would, he'd give you some ideas or maybe, maybe call him or email him and see if he could consult you on this individual situation. Um, you know, see what you can do legal, but dirty. <clears throat> um, you know, Google him, find out everything about the guy and the wife. The guy, like, you know, you find out that he's, he's, uh, I don't know, got a girl on the side. You know, how much time you got? You want to stalk him? Find out where he goes after work. Um, does he drink? Maybe a well-placed call to the cops would, you know, kind of, kind of be on him like a hawk and make sure that anything illegal kind of gets reported or gets discovered. <clears throat> does he have a mistress? That isn't Donna Hannaford in Australia. Um, that kind of thing. And like you're just like, hey, Bill, how you doing? Come on over for a second. So, uh, yeah, I, funny thing, I was at, I was at um, uh, Sally Strip Club, and I saw you go out with this gal, and you guys are rocking it in the, in the car. Man, I hope your wife doesn't find out. By the way, that kid of yours keeps trespassing on my property. Kind of gets annoying, wouldn't it be? Yeah. Well, see you later, Bill. You know, you got to get some dirt on him is what I'm saying. <clears throat> you know, threaten direct blackmail, but just, you know, man, be, ash be ashamed. Nice family you got there. Be ashamed if something happened to him. Nice cat you got. <laughs> Hope he can dodge car tires that don't threaten to kill his pets. Uh, but yeah, kind of, kind of take that administrative. Uh, go talk to a lawyer. Um, see if trespassing, you know. And here's the thing: if they're transitory, make their lives hell. Like if they're renting, they'll go find another place to rent. And you got your cameras, and if they, if they, you know, they always use the courts, always do the legal way. But then, kind of, you know, uh, oh, I uh. I don't know. I'm trying to think what are vices. I mean, there's booze, sex, drugs. Uh, I don't know. Work on the mom. I don't mean in that way, but can you tell your son not to travel on my property? <laughs> Is the mom more agreeable? Can you just be good neighbors with the mom? Is she hot? I just don't go that route. <clears throat> but, you know, position opens up. Uh, Yeah. I'm also trying to think of like, you know, fake dog poop or 
Maybe put a bunch of dog poop. Does he have a route? Does I mean all these details? Like, does he go to the same way? Because if the kid is violating people's private property, like if it's like a seven-year-old boy, but if it's like a thirteen-year-old kid, that's a predecessor to breaking an entry. Um. Yeah, it, 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 fighting the father as awesome and direct a solution as that would be that is going to have that's going to cost you more <clears throat> than any other route. But uh, yeah, I I would uh, probably not do. It. Hope that gives you some ideas. Macon 156, 14 generous Canadian dollars. It's so funny to move to East Europe to Canada and see pe people pitching about gas prices in 90s. In Poland, we already had crazy gas compared to our salaries. The stronger not survive, but most adapt. Yeah, I remember. Wasn't it Poland where they kept an eye on the price of eggs? They had the new immediate post-Soviet premiere. And I think it was Milton Freeman who was advising me. He says, keep an eye on the price of eggs. And the price of eggs came down because, surprise, the productive people and productive farmers are allowed to get their eggs. And the communists and the Democrat type of people who are like busybody government, you know, busybodies and nose in the business type of people. They didn't know anything about raising eggs, raising chickens to lay eggs. Canadians are weak. Canadians are just America on easy mode. I'd say God mode because you guys don't even have to lift a finger up there. <clears throat> Donna Hannaford, our Austra my Australian mistress agent in the field, five Australian dollars. Cappy, join, get a join member subscription button. We give you money each month. You choose it. Okay, all right. I'm I am all for money. What do you guys get out of it? Like, do I have to put on a private show? I already got a a, a, a subscribe star, and I I really well, not really, but I haven't had time to really do videos for that. Um, I would like to get like pinup girls. We did have that for a little bit. If there are any pretty girls that want to, I, I of course I pay. Uh, and it has to be PG thirteen. Sorry, no, I can't can't use our stuff. <clears throat> but what do you get out of it? Like at least Patreon or subscribe star people get the the access to uh, the road trip podcast. But why? Why? What do I have to send out baubles? Do I have to send out bumper stickers? Do I have to send out merch? Um, why you email me? Let me, let me know what the details are. Uh, hat and clogs, two bucks. They hate us cause they ain't us. I don't know. They raise us. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is pretty simple. Deep and thorough and philosophical as my explanation was a lot of it. I, it is, I'd say 75% rank jealousy. That's all it is. Beep, 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 beep. Any others left? Oh, here it is. You okay with minimalist if it involves torrenting your books? No, that's theft. There's this gal. Um, she's she's been a lifelong friend, and her mom. Oh, I read your book. It, you know, didn't make sense. Like an older gal. I said, Why why are you reading my book? Well, I heard about you. I'm like, yeah, but still saying she said, Oh, well, I got it for free at the library. I'm like, no. All these rookie authors coming out like, yeah, I got my book in the library. I'm like, that is the worst thing to happen. Uh, we know you love you, but but can't resist poking the cappy cap bear now and then. Yeah, but that's why I go and I have Doug at pirate uh, piratebooktakedown.com. If you're a content creator, whether it's videos or books, I don't worry about it. I go say, hey, Doug, I did some searching and some more stuff is up. He's like, I'll take care of it. I mean, and it's a perpetual battle because everyone's, of course, are you, you know, how do you, how do you regulate private networks? Um, but yeah, that's theft. I don't get, I mean, if people want to be, yeah, let's put it this, here's, here's the sad thing. Well, not for you, Sean, but let me explain the sad thing here, Sean. If you're the type to steal my books, you can read them all you want. You're not going to do it. It's going to be pointless. If you can't drop the, you know, 10 or 15 bucks on the book, uh, and you're okay with stealing, albeit on a, a very small level, you're not, you're not, uh, you got bigger issues and all the advice in my book, you're not going to follow it. And so frankly, you wouldn't, you lack the work ethic and, and I'm not a big moral principle guy, but I draw the line at probably the 10 commandments, you know, don't steal. 
But if you're okay with stealing, you're, nothing in my books is going to help you at all. It's kind of like welfare. You know what welfare has done to the American Indian community? Absolutely destroyed it. You know what welfare has done to the black community? Absolutely destroyed it. You know what flooding uh, the education industry with welfare or low price student loans and, and scholarships absolutely priced everyone out of it and destroyed it. <clears throat> um, so, you know, uh, free stuff, if that's your philosophy, okay, it's, it's not going to work. Hank Clogs, $3 super sticker. Thank you. I don't know what it is. I can't see the super sticker. Dude, it's like midnight there. Sun just said here, why are you up late? Because the work's got to get done. Look, let me explain something to you, Chad Oak. Not all of us are these upper uh, class Winnetka living people who have our CPAs and make 40 million a year doing the taxes for the rich and famous. All right. Some of us have to work. Some of us don't work these lofty hours of three months a year. And then we take nine months off. We can't all be like teachers. We just have months at a time off. Some of us need to slave and toil every day. That's why I'm up. A lot of people, had, a lot of requests sent. A lot of requests have been sent, so I'm, I'm just trying to stay on top of it. I had like three email requests I had to do. Mark Sweetser, 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 five bucks. I start electrician training per your guidance. Love it so far. Awesome. Hey, Mark, I got work for you if you want to come out to Rapid City. Actually, do I have work? I got some project you could probably work on. If you're in town, let me know after you know what you're doing. Uh, that's it. All right. The link to the minimalism course is below. Also, if you want to get Jacob Lund Fisker's book, Early Retirement Extreme, great book, very mathematical, very, very hand-holding. There's also Poor Richard's Retirement. Uh, and then I would also recommend Reconnaissance Man for those of you interested in van life and where to go and what to do. I'll be honest, if I were to do it all over again, I would have done van life. I would have gone, to, I would have gone military blah, 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 20 years in blah, blah, blah. van life. We've totally done van life. Maybe motorcycle life. I don't know. All right. See you guys later. Toodles.